Hi guys, Jo here with another card making tutorial. Today's card, I'm going to be doing some stamping um, and masking in order to create a one layer card using the Time for Tea Designs, Mew Are Awesome and It's Porty Time stamp sets. Uh, this is a really great way of mixing these two sets together. They've been designed so that the images are a similar size so that they all work in coordination with each other. Now, this is the first time that I've used this masking technique and I didn't have any masking paper at this point. So I am just using some post-it notes. Uh, I think in uh, the future I would rather use um, some masking paper that is fully uh, adhesive on, on all of the surface as it was a little bit tricky with my post-it notes. Um, but you can see here that I have already stamped and fussy cut out some of my images and I'm stamping my first layer of images down and then covering them up with the uh, post-it note masks before then stamping the next image on top of that and just overlapping the mask, um, the masked area, just so that it creates a little bit of depth. Um, my first image that I put down was the um, the little uh, food bowl because that will be the image that's right at the forefront of my of my picture. So that needs to go down first, as that will be the image that you will see at the front. And then every image after that will be will be behind the previous one. So I'm just popping on one of the cats there and you can see that I've overlapped the feet over the, the bottom cat's head because those feet will then be behind her head. Um, I, this did take a little bit of working out beforehand. I did start, you can see that some of my masks have already been stamped on because I have done a little bit of a trial beforehand to make sure that I'd got my, my layers and my setup correct. Um, and here I have um, put down the mask for the little hat first before stamping my dog image and that will leave then a little blank space so that I can now go in there and stamp the little hat for the dog. So that's all my stamping completed now and you can see as I remove the masks that that's just created that really cute layered effect um, and it has left a few little gaps. So I'm just using my Copic Multiliner, which will be suitable for using my uh, alcohol markers with when I come to colour, just to fill in any little little areas where um, the mask has overlapped a little bit so that I haven't been able to get a fully complete impression. And it's just created a few little, little areas which are easy just to fill in. And that just completes the image and makes it look nice and crisp. And that's the masking complete. I was really pleased with how that came out because, like I say, I've not really tried this technique before, but it looks so cute when they're all all piled up on top of each other in this way. So I've covered my images back up with my mask now because I want to do a bit of stenciling. And the stenciling that I'm going to do is just using um, a brick background stencil and some of my Distress Oxide inks. And I'm just applying those with um, my... Uh, blender um, brush and you can see that the, there's perhaps a little bit of shake on the uh, on the camera I'm really sorry about that there was nothing I could do about it my camera is actually set up um, onto my desk so when I blend because I'm furiously <laughs> blending it does create a little bit of a wobble so I'm sorry about that I did try and smooth it out with the video editing but it just it made it look like I was at sea. So I thought this was probably the better option. And it's just so that you can see that I'm mixing two colours together, the candied apple and the picked raspberry, um, and blending those gradually together so that uh, you can that you'll then be able to see the brick impression in the background uh, behind those uh, those cat and dog images. I've also masked off a bottom area with a bit of washi tape to create a little bit of a floor. So I'm just removing that bit of tape now, moving it up slightly so that I can now use a little bit of the hickory smoke to create my floor. So I'll be coming in with that now again with um, my blending tool and just applying some of that um, as lightly as I can. 
I do tend to be a little bit heavy handed and I really have to force myself not to apply too much pressure so that I get a nice smooth blend. Um, what I would say is if you barely touch the paper and bring and just apply a tiny little bit of ink at a time, then that, that is the best way of doing it. You can build up colour, but once it's on there, you can't take it away. Um, and I did discover this as I went over the back of um, my brick stencil. I did want to add a little bit of colour to that as I felt that the white was a little bit too stark. Um, I did have to just be careful with some of my... Um, post-it notes as well as they came a little bit dislodged there as you'll see and I was a little bit heavy-handed on this uh, left-hand side but I don't think it uh, it really affected the overall look of the of the card in the end um it did it did still look very pretty and uh like I say I think if I was to do it again I would just have to retrain myself to be not quite as as heavy-handed with my blending so I'm just reapplying my mask there just so that I can get that little bottom portion done. But I was conscious of making that that little area on the, the left that little bit darker, which I didn't want to do. So just finishing that up and that's my background complete. And I really think it does um, make a really great background um, and a one layered look, which is what I was trying to achieve. So now we're moving on to some colouring and I'm using my Copic markers to colour in my images and I've listed all of the colours that I've used at the top of the screen there. But what I typically do when I'm, I'm colouring up my images is I start with my lightest colour first and I put a base layer of colour onto my image. Now these are very small images and I'm conscious of not applying too much ink to the um, to the surface because that could create bleed so you'll see as we go through the the coloring process that sometimes I will just leave an area to dry slightly before I apply any more color to it um, but I've just applied a, a, a basic um, color palette um, using my E numbers and to, to the um, to the body and the face of the uh, of the dog and then just a little bit of the my r32 to the edges um edge of the nose and to the bottom portion of the ears and blended that out using my blender brush uh, my blender pen so that i don't um create a solid color it's just a light pale pink um for that uh, dog's nose um, moving on to the box again like I say I've used my lightest colour first and then I'm just applying darker shades um, of the E colours there to create a little bit of shading so around where the uh, the box would be in shade at the bottom underneath the paws um, anything that's um, in the back of the uh, of the image to create some dimension and then just across the middle I find that it's good to create like a little triangle of colour and that just gives the illusion of a little bit of bend in the box. Moving on to um, the middle cat which is a grey spot cat and one um, technique that I have picked up to make the colouring of my uh, cat and dog images that little bit easier is this spot technique. It just looks really cute. It's um, It just creates a, a cartoon type effect. It's not meant to be realistic fur, uh, but it just looks super cute. Um, and using my blender brush on the cheeks just to create a little bit of, um, to, to, to really, I suppose, dampen the uh, the surface of my paper before I apply colour means that it's not such an intense colour straight away. So again, some very simple colouring, not applying a lot of um, different shades of colour just to achieve that look, but where I want to create some dimension and overlap between those um, those characters, I've applied a little bit of the um, the grey, the coolest grey, um, the lightest of those greys, just where um, it would be in shade from the, the cat, um, the ginger cat that's sitting in front of him. 
So the Ginger Cat, again, I've started with my lightest shade first, um, applied um, the darker shade where I feel that there would be um, there would be some shadows cast. So my shadow is coming from the left hand side of my picture and I'm just doing a bit of tip to tip blending just so that I can create a nicer blend between my lightest colour and the, the darkest of, of those YR colours. Um, again, applying my blender brush first to saturate my paper and then applying the pink and blending that out again with the blender, um, the blender colour pen there uh, so that it, it doesn't create such a, an intense pink. So I've let the, uh, the background colours dry a little bit before applying my darkest YR68 um, and doing again the little triangle um, technique so that it creates a little bit of a tiger stripe. For my uh, for my ginger ginger moggy. This is a really easy technique to do. Um, it looks complicated, and I think if you see this many cat and dog images that you've got to colour up differently, it can be a little bit daunting. Uh, what I would say is you can make it really simple. You don't have to do any fancy colouring. You can just do um, your dogs and cats one colour if that's what you prefer. Um, and again, just because they are small images, you can just use two, three shades at the most um, really is all that's needed. So, for example, the black cat here, I've only used the T3, T5 and T7. Um, I've left his nose white so that you can still see his face um, and it is not a completely black or dark coloured cat so that you you know you can still see his character um, and I've started again with the lightest of those shades and I'm just building up um, to create uh, the dark dark grey uh, cat. Um, again applying the, the little bit of pink and you would think that the pink wouldn't show up on the black uh, or on the dark grey but it, it really does show up because the, um, the alcohol bleaches out a little bit of that dark grey when you apply that. Um, and, and again, that just adds a little bit of character to the cat's face. So my top dog um, is going to be a spotty dog. And again, this just makes that a lot easier from a colouring point of view. There's a lot of colouring in this uh, in this project. But uh, if, like me, you love to colour with your Copics, then this is the ideal project. Um, so again, just using a few shades of brown to create those spots and add a little bit of dimension with the darker browns around where um, there would be some overlap with the cats in front um, and where his ears overlap his face um, and then just where the, um, the eye patch is behind his muzzle. I've then gone in with my E43 shade around all of the the browner um, cats just to create and, and the dog there, the Scotty dog there, just to add an extra little bit of dimension where I felt there wasn't really that shadow being cast. And all of that just helps to, to create the, um, the, the 3D look. So I've just where there's a gap in between each of my images, I've applied my blender, my blender pen just to apply a little bit of um, of the alcohol to the paper before I then apply a little bit of my R32 to continue the look of the bricks in the background. It's just a tiny little bit. It just means that it, the background's continued and there isn't all that white space behind behind my little uh, characters. And now again, I'm just adding some spots to my ginger cat. Again, just using the same colour palette that I did with the um, the full ginger cat earlier. And again, that's just really quick and simple cat to um, colour combination to use. And again, the E43 just to apply a little bit of shading. I just felt that that was a bit more of a natural shaded colour than using the um, the greys. So you'll see here that there is about to be a bit of a photo bomb as uh, Rosie the kitten will appear. There she is. Hello, Rosie. <laughs> um, obsessed with uh, being where I am at the moment, but she's so cute. So I thought I'd just leave that bit in. <laughs> um, so now I'm just moving on to colouring my um, 
my cupcake. So just using some of my V number colors there. Again, it's a very small image. Don't need to do much um, blending to create a bit of dimension on here. Um, so just applying the lightest color first and then building up to my darker shades uh, where there would be some shadow cast from the left. And for the top of the cupcake, just very simply using my blender brush and my BG11 um, to create a little bit of a frosted top to the cupcake. For the hat bowl and candle, I wanted to keep the, the colour palette um, fairly simple. I didn't want to add any more colours really to this. So again, I'm using the BG um, series of colours to... Um, to apply uh, my shading to the, the bowl, the candle and the hat. So that just continues that colour theme throughout and just links it all together. Um, so again, applying my darkest colours to the left um, and then blending those out through my, um, my series of, of colours there. I'm just using my lightest colour then just to make sure that that's fully blended. And then for the for the flame of the candle, um, just again, because it's very small, just the Y15 and the Y19, just to add a little bit of depth to the bottom of that flame so that it looks like there's some heat coming from it. I'm just now then for the finishing touches, going in with my um, black jelly roll pen to add a little bit of depth to those eyes and noses. And it's at this point uh, I realised that I hadn't uh, completed the, the little bobble on the top of the hat. So um, I'm just using some of those uh, V uh, shades to uh, just add a little bit of colour to, to the top of the, the party hat. Now I'm using my white jelly roll pen just to add a few little finishing touches to each of the images, some spots onto the cupcake case um, and then some highlights and little dots on the cheeks of each of those, those cats um, and onto the top dog there um, as well as um, some dimension onto the box and that uh, food bowl at the bottom some little highlights in the eyes and around the nose and, and that completes the, um, the colouring portion of the video. So moving on now to creating the rest of the card, I'm using a set from Lawn Fawn for my sentiment uh, and I'm just using my stamping platform just to get that lined up onto the bottom of my um, the bottom of my images. Um, I'm using this tool just so that I can make sure that this is lined up correctly. I don't want it to be wonky or in the wrong place or not uh, get a great impression when I've spent all that time colouring. So I'm very conscious that uh, I get this right. So a couple of um, impressions required there to, to get a real good depth of colour for my sentiment. And this just says a little message to say, and the rest of my sentiment will continue on the inside of the card. Um, I don't do this a lot, but I just felt it really worked with the one layered um, card front, that there'd be a continuation of the sentiment on the inside. So again, I'm just applying this to my um, stamping tool, but there, there is a, a gap at the, the top of, the, well, at the bottom of the tool in the way that I use it. So I've just flipped that around so that the bottom of my card sticks out the bottom um, and it means that then I've got a purely flat surface uh, to then stamp my sentiment. The, sentiment, the rest of the sentiment comes from the Muir Pawsome stamp set and this says have a pawsome day. So I'm just lining that up, making sure that it's nice and straight and using the same Hickory Smoke Distress ink that I've used on the outside of the card just to continue that colour theme. And again, because it's Distress Oxides, um, it doesn't always give um, a perfect impression first time. So I've just done that, applied that a couple of times just so that uh, I get a really good um, a good impression onto the, the surface of the card. And I really liked the way that that, that looked. Um, so much so that I've decided then I'm going to apply a little bit more um, decoration to the inside using um, one of the, the little paw stamps that comes in the set and just doing some second generation, first generation and second ge generation inking using um, the cracked pistachio distress inked, which goes 
quite well with the the BG um, colours on the front of the the card. It's not an exact match, but I think it, st it still works. It was the nearest of my distress oxides that I got to that colour, um, so I went with it. Um, and I just think the addition of the little paw prints on the inside of the card is just really sweet. So I now need to create um, the panel for the front of my card and I'm using some dark grey cardstock that I had in my stash and I've cut that out using the Heffy Doodles um, rectangle nesting dies uh, in the largest uh, of those, those dies and I'm now just applying a little bit of the Hickory Smoke and some black moment, uh, some of the Dewdrop uh, Tuxedo Black ink around the outside just again to create a little bit of um, dimension um, to to the uh, to the focal panel on the back um, this really brings out the stitching element in the die as well so it it makes a, for a really good effect but again I'm trying to be as um, <laughs> light with my blending as possible as I don't want any um, harsh lines and it is just meant to create a, a slight um, smoky effect and, and not um, any you know real depth of colour on the back there because I don't want anything to take away from from my uh, stamped images so I'm just popping this together then on an A2 size cardstock as the uh, the rectangle dies are A2 in size and using some of my cosmic shimmer glue to apply this I am a big a fan of uh, liquid glues particularly for um, applying something like my uh, background panels just because I need to get them lined up I'm terrible at lining things up by eye um, and if I was to use um, any tape or foam tape um, I'm guaranteed to uh, not line it up correctly so the uh, liquid glue just allows me that little bit of wiggle room so that I can make sure I've got everything straight so I'm just using a bit of uh, clean cardstock to apply a bit of pressure to make sure that everything's stuck down nicely. And at this point, I was just applying finishing touches. Um, but you'll see that I do make a little bit of a boo-boo, um, which requires a little bit of cleanup. But it turned out to be a happy accident in the end. So I'm uh, just applying a little bit of glossy accents that I've dispensed into this really handy little um little bottle which has got a really fine tip on it and this allows me then just to have a little bit of control of where I apply my glossy accents and I love applying this to the noses of my critters it just creates that gorgeous little bit of um, dimension and that little bit of wet nose effect um <laughs> so um so yeah so that that's really really cute and then I'm applying some of my wink of Stella to um, my uh, hat and to the top of the cupcake but you'll see there that I hadn't realized I pressed too hard heavy-handed again um, and created a big splodge on my background and after I'd done all that work I was absolutely devastated I thought I'd ruined the entire thing so I'm trying to mop it up um, but it doesn't seem to be looking any better and I was thinking right how am I going to save this because I don't want to you know lose the entire project so my idea was that I apply a little bit of shimmer to the, my entire background. So I'm just using my Wink of Stella again over all of my bricks, all of the background um, to create an, a shimmer. Now, I wouldn't normally have done this, but actually, once it's dried, I really love the effect of it. But I wasn't confident that the splodge area would fully dry and evaporate. So um, I came up with an idea to try and cover that little splodge area up and that was to use some more elements from the um, the Love Letters die set from Lawn Fawn. And there are these really cute little speech bubbles that have a hi, a love heart um, and a little smiley face. And I've tried some different colour combinations, but what I thought would work really well would be the uh, Wilted Violet um oxide colour um, which matches the highlights on the cupcake and the top of uh, the party hat. So I have already stamped and die cut this out. I missed that bit of the footage out because uh, there was something strange was happening with the lighting and it was flashing a little bit and it was a bit uncomfortable to watch. So I didn't think this that you needed to see that as um, 
this video is pretty long already um, and you can get the idea that I've, I've stamped and I've die cut those out using the coordinating die cuts and then positioned those over the splodge and then across some of the, the rest of the background. And actually, I'm really, really pleased with how that looked. While it wasn't my intention to do it that way, I think the end result worked out perfectly. Um, it just uh, brings out the color in the cupcake. It adds um, another little element and it works perfectly with um, my sentiment, the a little message to say. And as it happens, the splodge in the background has evaporated and dried out really well. Um, so I don't think it, it's, uh, it's actually um, been a disaster in the end. And I think it just goes to show that you know, a lot of mistakes um, can be rectified. You don't have to destroy your entire project. And after all, it's a handmade project. Things will go wrong um, and there's usually usually a solution for it. So I really hope that you liked the project, the um, the masking techniques. I really hope you, you feel inspired to give it a try because it, it is much easier than you think. And the overall effect just looks really great. Um, and if you do like the, the video and uh, the project that you've seen, then it would be really great if you would like and subscribe. It just helps me um, to continue being able to do these videos. And if you've got any comments, anything that you would like to see in future videos, then I would love to hear from you. Um, it's great to know that, uh, that people are watching. There'll be more projects coming up. I intend to do one of these every week. So um, I look forward to seeing you again. And uh, thank you ever so much for watching. Bye-bye now.